FTS is armed. Go for launch. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Simplify, aim high. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Vehicle is pitching down range. T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 with the Crew Dragon capsule is heading east from pad 39A. Everything looking good right now. As we get ready for max dynamic pressure, we are now throttling down the first stage engines on Falcon, Falcon power 9. And telemetry nominal. Everything continues to look good. We're approaching the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle is supersonic and passing through maximum dynamic pressure. You've heard we're supersonic, we're through max Q. We're getting ready now to throttle the engines back up on the first stage. Stage one, throttle up. There's the call out. Okay, the major activity coming up in just over 10 seconds. Shut down and drag an escape from the Falcon 9. Miko, Dragon Launch Escape initiated. Dragon's away. And you can hear some really loud uh, cheering in the room. Okay, you just saw a bright flash there. It looks like Falcon that may be Falcon 9 breaking up. We've got some loud cheers um, here in Hawthorne. The, the folks that just watched live the Dragon separate. The next milestone we have coming up at 2 minutes, 25 seconds, um, we're expecting to see the trunk jettison. So that claw that connects the trunk to the capsule is going to separate, allowing Dragon to uh, separate from the trunk. That's coming up in 15 seconds. And we do have the report, loss of telemetry from Falcon 9, first stage. And there you just saw the trunk jettison again. Some really loud cheers here in Hawthorne, California. This test is looking great so far. Nice view from the back of the Dragon capsule. We're also trying to see if we get the view there on the right-hand side from the aircraft that's orbiting the area. Now the Dragon control system is now going to be reorienting the capsule. We're at a high altitude where the aerodynamics are negligible. So we're going to use the small Draco thrusters on the Dragon capsule to reorient it, that gets it in a position with a heat shield down to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and then later to deploy the drogue parachutes. Now those drogue chutes, we expect to uh, get confirmation that those have deployed at T plus 4 minutes and 48 seconds, so we've got just a little bit of breathing room before we hear that happen. Those parachutes are protected during ascent, on orbit, and re-entry by a panel that's up near the nose cone of the capsule. So we're going to jettison the panel, then the mortars will fire to deploy those two drogue chutes. Again, that's coming up in just over a minute at T plus 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Now those drogue chutes, when we see those come out, those will open, and those will come out before the main parachutes. That Those drogue parachutes are uh, what we use to begin to decelerate the Dragon capsule in preparation for a splashdown. We understand we're getting into the drogue deploy envelope on the Dragon capsule. We expect that will happen when Dragon is at about 20,000 feet.
about 15 seconds to drogue, drogue shoot deploy. And there they are. Drogue shoots are out. Again, some major cheering going on here as every stage of this test unfolds. Now we're going to be getting ready for the main shoots to deploy. Now main shoots will be coming up fairly quickly. There are four main parachutes. These are the newest Mark III parachutes. They're each 116 feet in diameter. We deploy them about two kilometers above sea level, 6,500 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. We're getting good views from the Dragon and the airplane, showing the two drogue chutes. Now we're just waiting for the main parachutes to be deployed very shortly. And we have the view from a different camera on Dragon showing the four main parachutes. Now they are deployed in a reef condition. That means we're keeping them fairly shut to avoid shocks, and now we're slowly opening up the four parachutes. Great views coming okay. off of the Dragon camera on the left, and we can also see the four parachutes from the airplane on the right. That is a really cool view. Nice view of the orange and white parachutes as they're opening up into the second position, and they're going to fully open. From fully open, we'll be descending about 20 to 25 feet per second down to the Atlantic. So from that 6,500 foot altitude, it's going to take us a few minutes to splash down. Also right now, now that the mains are out, a sequence is performed on the Dragon, which will reorient the crew seats into a splash down position, give them a little better angle to take the uh, slow bounce as we hit the ocean. Now, Maria, I talked about uh, the parachutes came out initially at a reef condition. That's fairly standard. They come out not fully open. That way, they're minimizing the shock on the parachutes. We're also minimizing the shock on the capsule. Again, we want to give a smooth ride to the crew as they are coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. Right. Now, the parachutes are located behind a door that's at the bottom of the capsule. It's below the crew hatch. So Dragon commands the door to release, and as you saw in the video, the drug parachutes pull the door away, and that pulls the four main parachutes out. Now these are the new Mark III parachutes. We've completed here at SpaceX over 80 tests of that parachute system, including 10 multi-parachute tests of this particular upgraded parachute design over the last few months to demonstrate that the design is ready for flight. And we are about, we're just inside two minutes of when we expect to see a splashdown. The recovery teams are already out there in the Atlantic Ocean standing by, uh, ready with fast bo boats to begin their initial approach to Dragon. Again, we mentioned this before, uh, but the recovery operation, we expect to take a couple of hours. I've heard a call out, we're below 500 meters. And we expect when Dragon splashes down, it's going to be roughly 32 kilometers offshore. Again, we're looking at a live view. So far, uh, all things have appeared to go nominal for this test. All things looking great so far. We saw the four main parachutes deploy. You're looking at them now, uh, fully open. And we are coming up on about a minute until splashdown. I think we may have heard a call out of 100 meters to go. Yeah, I just heard that too. Yeah. Now those four parachutes are actually going to be released from the capsule after splashdown and they'll be recovered too. And we are down. down a little bit early, in fact. And there you can see the recovery boat beginning to approach instantly. I'm going to try to talk a little bit louder so you can hear me over the folks here. Uh, this has been a really exciting thing to see because uh, we had the weather 
we weren't really sure if the weather was going to cooperate. Um, we were trying to weigh, you know, is it favorable for launch, but also is it favorable for recovery because they really have to watch the height of those waves um, in order to do this operation. Um, that, that fast boat is, is just off screen now, but there's four fast boats out there in the area to begin, again, that initial approach to Dragon. Um, the recovery operation from here takes about two hours, but all in all, this looks like a really great test. Yeah, a lot of fun watching the Dragon come down. We had great views from the onboard camera in particular. Now I think this camera is from our Go Searcher recovery ship, which is also the tender for the fast boat. You saw one of them headed out there. And you can also see it looks still a little choppy, so you understand we were kind of on the edge of the weather conditions out in the splashdown area. But they assessed the, uh, the boat data, the buoy data, looked at the forecast and said we were Go. And while we took two and a half hours to get here, we finally got here and it was great. And that's the summary for today. It looks like right now a great test. Visually, everything happened. Falcon 9, you saw the liftoff. We had kind of a long view from the uh, camera. Dragon did shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines and separate. We did see the flash as the Falcon 9 uh, came apart, as predicted, no surprise there. Dragon, we saw a great view as it got to Apogee. It deployed the trunk, separating it, reoriented. Then the drogue chutes came out, the main chutes came out, and then we just waited for that nice soft splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. And we saw, and it looks like we just lost the view um, from out there on the ship, but you couldn't really see much from that particular angle. Um, again, that recovery operation is going to take a couple of hours, so we're not going to stay on the air for the duration of that. Um, but we are going to be back for a news conference um, coming up at 11.30 Eastern time this morning. That would be, let me do the math real quick, 8.30 uh, Pacific time. We're going to hear from NASA and SpaceX leaders about their initial thoughts on this test that you just saw. Of course, everything looked fantastic, but there's going to be a lot of data to dig into. They're going to also collect those parachutes, get a lot of data from that, and then um, see what the next steps are on the path to Demo 2, when, of course, we're going to be launching NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. So stay tuned for that news conference. It will be carried live on NASA TV. If you're watching on the web, just tune to uh, nasa.gov forward slash live so you can see that coverage. Again, that's 8.30 Pacific time, 11.30 Eastern. Thanks so much for joining us for this morning's test.